Welcome to Zero to Fight Stick. This is an episode on wiring the tournament lockout switch. Now on the SCI 24mm switches I got, they do have to be adapted to work with the cable that all fight sticks provided. Um, otherwise, they're just not going to fit. The spade connector on the SCI switches is a little too big, so we just need to make some converter wires. And we need three. So I've gone ahead and pre-made a couple of them. You can see here, these have the wide female spade right there. And they have a nice little plastic cover on them. And we have a smaller male spade on the other end. But we need a third wire, and I figured that'd be a great way to show you what we're doing here. What you're going to need. Well, you want some wire strippers. Um, you're going to need a little piece of wire to match the other size, preferably keep them the same length. Um, these are a little bit bigger than the 24 AWG we're using elsewhere, but you can use whatever fits the uh, quick disconnects. You're going to need a large crimper that handles one millimeter, uh, a toenail clipper. I don't know why this guy keeps becoming useful, but he do it does. So have one of those hands. Sometimes you just need to trim the uh, stripped end a little bit, just enough. Uh, you're gonna, for this, you can use just one big piece of heat shrink, or you can use a little bit of cable wrap, which we've done elsewhere. Um, it's really up to you. This is going to be such a short run that you know, whichever works. Or if you don't want to bother with that, you can use zip strips, cable ties, however you want to call them. Uh, scissors come in handy, heat gun, just if you're doing this leaving, and if you're doing this leaving you need a hot knife or a trusty little blowtorch. Uh, and also if you want to test the wires, you'll want a multimeter. So let's get started. First of all, we're going to take our piece of wire, and this doesn't have to be very long, I think this is about two and a half, three inches. You don't really want it to be long because that tournament lockout thing is really long already. And we just want to strip off a little bit. I think this wire is not stranded, so it's going to be a little more ornery. It is. It's just a little denser. Now the trick is, and I think it's going to be very hard to see this, on your quick disconnect there is a big flap on the end here and a little flap on the inside. What we want to do is get just a little bit of the insulation where the big flap is and the, the, wiring, the exposed wiring where the little flap is. We don't want the wiring to come all the way into here, that'll screw things up. Just about, mm, there is about nice. Um, I think I need to cut a little bit more of the jacket off, just a tad. But once you get that, we'll go into crimping. So I'm going to take a moment to fix this. If you cut too much of the jacket, hey, we're old buddies, the toenail clippers are here to help you. And if you have one, um, a magnifying glass or a soldering setup like this can be helpful, especially if you're older like me and you just can't see things up close very well. So you can take a look at that. And I've got a little loose guy here, so I'm going to trim it just a bit to make it even. Because I'm picky like that. If it would work. There we go. So there's a couple ways you can adjust it. Um, you just want it to fit just right in. Like I mentioned, little wing is where your jacket's going to go, and small wing is where you want exposed wire to be. So, back in a second. All right, we're back. I've got my stripped wire on both ends. Just a couple hints on stripping wire. You don't want to use too much pressure. Uh, you should have a hole size on your stripper that's made for the gauge of wire, but if you're not sure what the gauge of wire is, you know, be conservative. You don't want to cut a lot of conductors off. You're finding there's lots of copper or uh, whatever material is on your inside. 
uh, you're getting the stranded wire falling off, then you might want to start again. All right, so once again, we're checking that. Oh, look, that looks pretty good. So to crimp it on there and secure it, we're going to take our crimper, and you need a, for these, these take a one millimeter hole. This is just marked one. And you'll notice on this one, it's probably hard to show, there are little steps. So because this is a two part, we're going to put the big fins. And the way I think of it is you want to match this valley in the crimper and put the mountain of the uh, connector here. All right. And then because this is a ratcheting, I can just squeeze it on down just a little bit until I get a first click. Now I'm going to take my wire, put it just far enough in. I want to check the other side. Where is my... And I can see that it's just in far enough. And then I'm going to go ahead and give it a good hard squeeze. And once it's down, let it go, release, push it out from the top, and there we go. And before we go any farther, this is not, I mean, you're not going to want to apply too much pulling force here. I'm not pulling on a really at all, but uh, you do want to give it a little tug, make sure it is secure enough. This one looks like it's good. And then we're clear to put this cover on. Slide that into position and we're set. Now we just need to take care of the other end. Um, my kit did not have covers for these male ends, but they do have covers for bullet ends that were in their little tiny things here, and they fit just fine. I don't like leaving exposed terminals, so that's a good practice. Uh, with these though, you can actually fit them on after you slip, or after you crimp this guy on, uh, but we'll go ahead and put this there, and we'll repeat. So we've got our copper already measured, and it's out there. Fit that just like so. Squeeze it down just slightly. We know it's not going to fall out. Slide this in just a little bit. And of course now is when it doesn't want to fit. <laughs> All right, there we go. Let's give that a good solid squeeze. Sometimes you might want to follow up with pliers just to make sure it's secure. In our case it looks pretty good. And then we can push this up as we're ready. Though with the male end we need to connect it before we slide this up and cover it. Alright, let's talk about how now that we've got a cable, our little converter cable made, how can we make sure it's good? We'll actually pass current through it. Well, that's where our multimeter is going to come into play. What you want to do is, I've just got a kind of generic one. It's fine. Turn this. There's a setting here. Some of them have tones, um, but it looks like a little arrow into a stop. So I'm just going to turn it there. And it doesn't matter which end goes where, really. I'm going to plug one into here. Right now it's at minus one, minus O2. Good. We should, optimally you're getting zero, but a pretty low number like that should be fine. We can test it on our other ones as well. Plug that in there. Minus O1, good, we have some current flow. And let's test our last one just for fun. Oh, one. All right, great. That means we have some flow. So we can turn our multimeter off and put that to the side. From here, this is really just another cable wrapping job. Um, I actually recommend trying 
because this is such a small piece, you don't want to use the straw or anything. Um, a lot of them I've just been sliding on, uh, struggling with that, but hey, it works. So once again, we're going to take a little piece of this, make it a much smaller piece. And this is so small, it's almost not worth it, but I'm going to do it anyway because I like that cable wrap. It's just pretty. Slide on here. Slide through here. And slide this guy through here. Wonderful. We do want to leave some wire play, otherwise it's not going to be fun trying to get to our switch. And actually, I think we need to cut this in half again. Because it's just too, it's too big to fit anything on there. go. Fit one, fit two, and fit three. Okay, let's pull these through just enough. And again, I almost just recommend using a slightly longer piece of heat shrink and just covering it that, but you know, I want to overcomplicate everything possible. Let's try to kind of flatten this out because our red will be pin one, this will be pin two, black pin three, just for a, a nice clean reference. And I get the feeling this is going to be way too long. Don't be afraid to modify it on the fly. Oop. Helps to have the cap off of the blowtorch. <laughs> Kids don't chew this at home. And from here, it's just like the keep cable sleeping that was shown in previous episodes, just a lot shorter. Um, whoops, I want my middle one first, actually. Anyway, I'll see you back here in a minute. All right, I admit I'd lost patience, and it's just too short of a lead to really uh, get that nice wire wrap, so I just use a piece of heat shrink, and there we go. You don't need a lot of play on the male side because you're going to have connectors coming in. We just need a little bit on the switch side. So that's how we make it and we'll show you how to install it in a bit. Hey guys, wanted to talk about the turbo button and LED cable I developed. Um, I think you can actually use an L3 R3 touchpad and just kind of cut off the ends and rework it from there. However, I just decided since I have the materials, I'm going to make my own. Uh, it starts off, you've got a JST 4 pin here, PH. Um, and I used red, white, blue, and black cable. Now they control different things. One is a pin out. <clears throat> this left side goes to an LED. It needs to be a 3.3 volt, I believe. Uh, and we'll talk about wiring that later. And this, the other side goes to your turbo button. So from there, you can see I just heat shrunk together those two bundles and then wire them out. I've got a color code zip tie. This, I'm making this clear. Right now, I don't have the ends for this, so we're leaving that alone right now. But over here, I've got the connectors that'll go to our turbo button. It's not too hard. Just takes a little time to sleeve the cables and make them pretty. Um, other than that, it's pretty much going to be plug and play, at least for the button side. And once I get the ends for this and the setup for the LED panel of LED panel, I use it very loosely. Uh, we'll uh, have some turbo fun, whatever 80s phrase that would be. All right, guys. Hope that helps you if you're interested in creating a turbo button. Again, I believe you could use 
you could retrofit one of the common L3, R3 touchpad uh, setups because that is also a JST 4 pin. Just take the wires, um, keep some of the ends, and change the others. Yeah. So take the first two pins, wire them to your LED, whatever that's going to be. Take the other two, strap them to a button, and you're set. Again, I just like to overcomplicate things. Well, hope this helped. See you around. Welcome to Zero to Fight Stick. This is an episode about wiring some lighting harnesses to the brick board. And we're going to start with what it takes. First of all, I really recommend you have a magnifying glass. This is a little soldering buddy helper. It has a nice little magnifying glass on it. Uh, we're going to need some wire strippers, preferably for the wire gauge you have. I find even the 20, um, this has a 20 cutter and it still works on the 24 gauge I have. Uh, we're going to need some wire. We're going to need a JST 5 pin connector. Uh, and later on we'll need some wire wrap. We'll also need our small crimper for this. We need one that handles 1.6 and 1.9 on this. Uh, what is also helpful is our ever-present buddy, the toenail clipper. He keeps being useful, I guess. And other stuff for wire wrap, such as a heat gun. And we'll also want a mini screwdriver. We're not screwing things in, but I just need this as a probe. So this is a really small hex head. It is the Simeject head on this one. But uh, if you have something that's similar, like a really small flat head, that should work too. So what I've done is I've already pre-wired four of the five leads you need. So you're going to need a JST PH connector is what they're called. And you can get that in a kit with uh, female pins and other headers and other things like that. Um, the last one we're going to do is a blue wire. And the first step is just grab our strand of blue wire I have coming out of the box here. Uh, and we also want one of those pins. Now if you saw one of the other videos where we're crimping quick disconnects. This is similar, just on a very tiny scale. So it's really, I don't know, you're, you're probably not going to be able to see that. What you'll have is basically the two wing design again, as with, we did with the quick disconnectors, but you'll see kind of like, um, almost like a keyhole on one end. It's very small, doubt you're seeing it, sorry. Um, and then on the other side of that, there's kind of a locking tab. It's really tiny. You'll see it underneath the magnifying glass if you look. So the object here is we want to just uh, slice off just a little bit of this jacket. So we're going to break out the wire cutters. You can start a little bit long and then use your toenail trimmer to clip it back. Uh, I try and twist these together, just seems to make it work a little bit better. And then using the magnifying stand I have here, just like before with the quick disconnects, uh, you want the exposed wire to be in that middle part without going into too far into the uh, keyhole pin because then you're in trouble. And you want some of the insulation of the jacket to catch on the back longer wings. It's very, I know it's really hard to see. Uh, there is a better video. I'll be linking to it in the blog post for this. And that's where I learned this technique from. So what we want to do is first make sure that he is lining up. This, I think I cut it a little long. So I'm just going to trim this a little bit. And this does take some time. Unfortunately, there's just not a pre-made uh, five wire harness that goes to the lighting array. Uh, so we do have to make our own for this. Now let's try this again. If you met and don't be afraid of messing up here because these pins are very finicky. Um, I, I've thought I've had these lined up perfectly. I've gotten two good crimps in a row. Third one just blows up in my face. So with practice, it'll get a little better, but these are still pretty wily. 
Uh, the next trick is you want to take the small crimper, locate, you should have a 1.6 on the header here, and then find that and slot. Whoop. Let me just drop everything. What we want to do is take that middle section, that middle set of wings, and slide it like so into the crimper. Because this is not a spring loaded, we just want to add, put enough pressure to keep it locked, pressed down and not going anywhere, and you can try to press the wings against it. Now that we have our cape wire ready to go, we just slot it through there very carefully. And the insulation should bump up against the crimper as you keep it held. While so it will go into the mini wings, the second set and we just press and you should feel it collapse underneath the crimper and it wants to be a little obstinate now that I'm on camera oh it locked there we go All right with that we should have our middle pair so this is still a very tenuous connection don't be pulling on it quite yet um, one step you should take right now you'll notice the back wings there they're still exposed I'm taking my wire stripper, the ends have pliers on them, so just giving it a little bit of a squeeze to turn it from a V shape into more of a U. Don't go too far. And then kind of bend the cable just slightly down, let it point up. So you have the keyhole facing up there. And now you want to locate the 1.9 section of your crimpers. Kind of push it towards the middle, or towards the back in those teeth and lean it a little far forward. I find that seems to help a little bit. And then here's the moment of truth. This is where I screw up more often than not. Give it a squeeze and this one came out good. So we're lucky. Um, you'll know because the, in, the tabs will dig into the insulation here and that'll secure its hold. It's, you wanna give it a little tug, nothing too hard. These are not meant to take a lot of pressure. Um, but it's, once you've got it locked down, it's pretty good. I give it a little side grip with the pliers, just enough. Don't press it too hard. We don't want to screw up that nice. And then get the top a little bit more. Just a gentle press, nothing too intense. All right, so now we have, I've already done four of the wires here. This is the final one. Um, if, you'll know, if you look at the JST connectors, they have this locking tab design and there's like a kind of a U shape here. I don't know if you can see that on the video. And on the flip side, you'll see there are some from the other pins that are in, you can see that the locking tab that's on the back of the wire uh, has slotted in. We just need to put this in. So we wanna align that locking tab. And I know it's impossible to see, I'm sorry. Um, hopefully the other video I'll be linking to will show it just as well, if not better. And that will go, flip this around. So the keyhole, if I had the kind of the U side up, the keyhole faces towards me right now, and it just starts slotting it in and working as much as I can by finger. Now this is where the mini screwdriver comes in. The SIM tool bit is pretty good for this. Again, flathead will work. You just kind of want to work it in and eventually you should hear and feel the locking tab slot in and there you go you have one end of your lighting array and we're set all right now we'll just need to trim length on this and then start connecting it to our lighting array see you then quick tip on sleeving your cables. When you're measuring these out, you want, you'll notice on the 20 pin, there's one, these leads get progressively longer. Obviously you want to measure to about here to make sure that you don't end up covering up this lead or this lead or this lead. Uh, that's all. Hey guys, just thought you'd want to see what a sleeve 20 pin looks like. Again, I did not do the joystick.
connector. It's a little hard to get off. I'm, I don't feel confident about it. Or the ground wire lead. I mean, you can do this. Um, maybe I will. I don't know. Uh, so, well, here's one bundle. Here's our start select. And here's our other bundle. I did do some uh, zip ties around these ends so I could tell what's what. You know, hey, I'm going to need to connect the orange one. Well, there you go. So, there it is. There's a one finished product almost. Just need to put a couple of zip strips on this bundle in particular. But, hey, there you go. Just another kind of show off thing. Uh, here's some finished cables. So, here's L3, R3 touchpad. Here's stick select. And here's our 20 pin, all nicely bound up. 